Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And this week we're starting out here on Oliran where uh, Mike has been building up a new iron supply. This system is quite simple and, and straightforward. We've uh, set, we've realised that we're running a little bit low on iron on, out on uh, over on Norvis, so we thought let's go out to an iron planet and get a bit more of it. And so Oliran is the obvious one to go to. It's in the Kalida system, so it's a nice easy flight to get there. It's really really big. It doesn't have any biters, and it's an iron primary. And so that means when we put down these um, when we put down the core miners, we get out these iron chunk um, core fragments, which we can then well we were then stockpiling over here. And the thing about the iron core chunks is when you crush them you get an enormous amount of iron out of them so for every 20 you put in you get almost 20 iron out again so it's almost one to one um, and but the, but it almost the, the numbers don't really matter the fact is that it's the percentages that matter so you're getting something like 90 95 percent iron out of these things maybe, maybe maybe closer to 90 given the core fragments and the stone um, and then you can recrush the uh, the core fragments that come out which is being being done over here and you get even more iron out and okay lots and lots of other things as well but even more iron so you get you're getting huge huge amounts of iron. If we have a look down at one of these, these warehouses down here, you can see the sort of proportions we're looking at. Yes, there's a little bit of wood for some reason, that's a little bit weird, but never mind. Uh, some, co some coal, a little bit of stone, and then mostly iron, and then a smattering of other things down at the bottom here. Uh, the iron is, appears to be being passed around and around in circles between, this, between the two warehouses because they're set up slightly strangely. But never mind, let's ignore that. I think this is just a sort of an overflow before, while, while it was being built and we're testing it to make sure it was, everything was working nicely. So the other thing about core mining is that when you put when you when you crush the cores, you get out all these liquids as well. So you get out water and mineral water and pyroflux and crude oil. All those come out of, out of the processing as well. And so you need to do something with those. I imagine we're almost certainly going to be venting the mineral water because nobody wants mineral water. No, I take it back. It's being brought all those all those fluids except the water are being brought down here and put into barrels. So we've got a machine up here that's a, a well a storage tank that's storing the oil and then and then the oil is being put into barrel. Crude oil has been put into barrels here. Pyroflux here and mineral water here so those are all then being passed onto the belts load and eventually will be loaded into the warehouse to go into the trains the only the, 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 the odd one out is the normal water which is being fed down into this tank and then being used to grow trees and we need to grow trees because in order to make the barrels you need steel so we've got loads of iron ore that's not a problem but you also in order to turn the iron plates into steel plates you need to have some coke as well and that requires coal which I mean, we've got a supply of coal coming out of the um out of the core processing up here that'll probably be sufficient uh, and then there's the wood that's coming out of here and this is probably an excessive number of greenhouses but we've got so many greenhouses from ripping up the free power systems in the past that i, I, I don't think we care chuck as many in there as you want it'd be, it'd be fine uh, the beacon is probably unnecessary but never mind so yes, we have a supply of wood. That means we can make the coke. That means we can make the steel, and therefore make the barrels. And all of that, as you're fairly, as you're very, very used to now, all gets dumped into the um, in, in, into these uh, warehouses down here. I don't know what this trend, signal receiver is receiving. Okay, it's getting a signal down from the spaceport. I'm not sure why it would be doing that, but uh, okay, apparently it is. I guess that tells us everything that's up there in space, which is nice to know, but not, not, not I don't think absolutely necessary for this. And so we then have the standard train will come down, pick up a load of iron ore and a few impurities, and then go back up at the elevator, where it can then come over to here to unload. And it's run around this loop a few times now, and we're making so much iron ore from this that the system is now completely full. So we've got a, 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 a fullish train, well, not empty train anyway, full warehouses up here, and the spaceship has cleared off over to Norbit, where it has landed here, and it's unloading, well, it's, it seems to be mostly unloading um, iron ore at the moment, which is absolutely fine, the order doesn't really matter, um, but as you can see, it's filled up the it's filled up the, these three warehouses, so it's done at least two, it's, this is at least its second trip, it's filled up this warehouse, filled up this warehouse, filled up the train, and so, that's it, we now, we've now got a train that is, uh, is capable of uh, bringing iron ore down in enormous quantities. Um, at the moment, we've got it set up to not work, because we want. Uh, we, we don't want. To, we, de we decided, um, and I'm not 100% sure why we've decided this, but it's been decided that we're not going to start using the iron from here yet until the supply from the mines seems to dry up a little bit. But eventually, it'll be able to go down this alternative elevator here, which hasn't been built. So I think the reasoning actually might be so as to save on elevator cables, because if we if we build this one up, then this is going to start consuming um, whatever it is four cables per minute as well. So we're going that that'll double the number of uh, cables we're using on Norvis more or less. And uh, so we thought we thought, but we thought we put in a second elevator over here because it's it's really quite a long way from here all the way to the elevator over here and this elevator sometimes at least when the factory is busy is in fairly high usage so we'd, we'd, we'd like it it seems like a good idea to try and perhaps um, 
separate the two a little bit. Back over here we can look at the opposite end and at the moment this is just an iron drop off station. In the future we plan to allow this to be um, iron, copper, stone and anything else we need to drop off can, can all be dumped here fairly easily. Um, but at the moment it's a very very small loop. And yes, the, uh, the iron can be dropped off here. When we do want to activate it, it's just going to be a case of rotating this belt here, and then that'll pour the, um, the, the cables in, and we'll quickly build up the elevator. But for now, not not running. Um, we've got a train over here, and this 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 is the part. I think this is the part Tristan set up. So once we got to Norbit, all the stuff from on Oliran was was Mike's doing, and basically the stuff in in, in Norbit and down on Norvis was Tristan's doing. So you know, uh, give credit where to the, to the right people here. And this train being stuck here is a little bit unfortunate. There should be a warehouse or a strong box or something to cache the cables, so the train can go off and deliver them elsewhere. But I don't think this train is actually needed for delivering elsewhere at the moment, so it doesn't actually matter. Anyway, yes. So they, they will then we can then put the iron in here, um, and this is a um, this is going to super low priority iron ore drop. Apparently, I wonder if I can find that station. Yes, there it is. And so we have a priority system with the train with the, with the uh, with, with the ore train. So over here we have his, this is the iron ore drop tra uh, station. However, a lot of the trains that come in like this one, will first come to an iron smeltery priority station. So this train has come from an iron ore priority pickup, which means uh, probably the core mining area, possibly the um, po possibly the, the uranium processing, because both of those pr produce iron ore that we want to get rid of as a priority as quickly as possible, because it's, an, it's either an overspill from something else that we don't want to back up, or it's the free supply of iron ore that comes from core mining that we have loads and loads of and want to just keep flowing and, and using up as quickly as possible and, and, and keep that one flowing and use that one as a priority. It then comes to these priority stations and that means that when the train waits here, when, the, when this station triggers and says, oh, I need another train, these are bound to be the closest because, well, they're, they're really, really close. They're, they're much closer than anywhere else possibly could be. So they will then come from here Around here, unload the iron ore, and well, if we were actually making any iron ore at the moment, which we don't seem to be, um, then then it would all come from there. I'm not sure why our iron um, usage has dropped off so much recently, because we used to get we were getting through enormous quantities of it and and struggling a little bit in the past, but apparently it's just the 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 ebb and flow of Factoria. So that's the priority one coming from the coming from the core mining, uh, almost certainly. Uh, then the next one is any any trains that come from um, iron mines because those will come to this station as well, but they won't have the priority. So if there's no trains waiting in priority here, then it will call one from a mine and they'll they'll do the longer journey over and drop off the iron ore. So that that makes sure that we never run out, but that we have um, but that we that we use it up from the correct places first. If both of those have a shortage, so if there's no, if if there's um, if there's no, if there's insufficient in here from the uh, priority trains, and there's no mine trains coming in, and so because of that, the uh, the amount of iron in in this warehouse drops down to uh, less than twenty thousand, which means basically, which basically means it's uh, eighty percent full. So it it doesn't have to drop all that far, but within a, but because these are all um, full of iron ore as well, the chances of it getting to that if the system isn't broken is very very small. If it does get to that point, though, however, we have this super low priority um, iron ore drop station down here, and, a tra and, and trains will come to here from the uh, from the space supply of iron, and then unload into this warehouse, and then that will be passed through into here if if necessary. And um, we could have multiple trains on this route as well. We may need, we need need to put in a stacker if we wanted that, but it should work to allow us to keep uh, to keep the sort of the, the diff various different iron ore supplies being used in prior being used in the correct order so that's from core mining first then from mines then from space uh, i'm not 100% sure whether we should say the space whether where the space one should be put in there but i guess it's um the, the supply from space requires elevator cables and fuel and, and all that sort of stuff to bring it over. So we might as well use up the patches we've got on Norvis first and see how long they last. And then once those are all gone, we can then start using the, um, the, the, the space supply. Looking up here, it does seem that we have a trickle of iron ingots coming through. So they are they are being made, um, and they're also being oh, they're also being sliced up into into plates, which is interesting. I didn't know we had anywhere that still used plates, but uh, you know, apparently we do. Um, so yeah, they, we are we are still making the ingots over here. The the furnaces are still running. There is still a bit of iron iron flowing. Um, it's just not cascading through quite as quickly as I thought it was. Um, maybe it's because the steel's not. I, I don't know. Anyway, we we don't seem we seem we are getting through some iron ore as you can see over here. It's being fed in by all of these um, all, all, all from all of these warehouses. It's trickling out down this way. It it's being it is being used up. So we we do need to keep a healthy supply of iron ore available. 
Continuing with the general thread of what has Tristan been up to this week, I shall now move on to the energy sciences. And he's added in a feed of holmium um, ingots coming down here to go into the energy energy train, which goes up to Norbit to drop off all of its supplies up here where they will be poured into the, into the, into the warehouse, rattle along here. And so adding in the holmium ingots will allow him to then chop them up here and then pass them out down this belt over here. And I believe this is a this this is this is a fix for the uh, the previous system where they were bringing being essentially the holmium ingots were being brought in by delivery cannon. So in theory we can get rid of this delivery cannon chest and all these belts and things, um, and just have the and have the uh, holmium ingots come up by train. Now there don't seem to be any at the moment. That train is clearly sitting down there twiddling its proverbials and should should be coming up bringing a load of supplies, um, but. But it hasn't, which means we're going to run out of the Holmium plate, or we have run out of the Holmium plate, which is a bit unfortunate. So again, we run into the problem of how do you decide exactly when to trigger a train? Because you want it to fill up to capacity, so that it will bring up a decent amount of stuff each time it runs. You don't want it just rattling up and down all the time. But you also don't want to run out of things up here. And I suppose maybe the idea, maybe the other way to do it would be to have... Um, We'll be put the put well. Firstly, you put the shopping list behind another uh, decider combinator, so it's it's, it's sort of de 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 removed from this network. And you could then watch for anything. You could then have a minus one of absolutely everything you're expecting, and watch for that. And when you see that minus one, then you send a signal down to Norvis that says send the train immediately because we have run out of something. And then even if you're only asking for a relatively small quantity of that something, the train will bring it up when you're when you've run out completely. I'll try and remember to do that the next time I see this sort of problem. This 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 train is Tristan's responsibility. So I'll, uh, I'll make the suggestion and then let him decide whether he wants to do it or not. But I think if I see that problem with the beryllium stuff, then I might implement it because it does feel like a nice way to... It gets around the problem of, well, we're only asking for holmium ingots at the moment, but we're completely out of them. But we don't want to ask for a full train's worth of holmium ingots because it would overwhelm the storage system up here and we'd have far too much of it. So we're just going to try and nudge the numbers up and up and up until we feel like it's balanced and that doesn't quite... I mean, it, it basically works, but you tend to end up in, in this sort of position where you, you've run out of one thing. And we could have the same problem. We could potentially have the same problem here on the on on this bus as well. Uh, I think we're asking for enough stuff up here, enough different things that the train tends to run pretty frequently. But actually, no, we've we've run out of stone here, for for, for example, um, which is uh, I thought I think we're getting we were getting yes, that's because we we're getting stone in from the um, is it was it you. Yes, we're getting stone in from the core recycling area, so actually that's why we've run out of stone. That's all gone because we we aren't we were taking the stone straight down to Norvis again now. Um, so yeah, we might need might need to fix that one. Um, the low density structures, no, those are actually fine. Immersite plates, yes, we're short of those, but that's for different reasons. That's because we don't have any at all. Quantum processors, similarly, and concrete, interestingly. Oh, but that's not actually going anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, basically the system is working, apart from apart from areas that aren't working for very, very specific reasons, rather than the more general reason I was talking about there. <laughs> anyway, getting back to what Tristan's been doing. Uh, yes, he's, he's boosted the production of a number of the different um, energy, energy data cards, because um, he's realised that he's not making, basically he's realised he's not making the Energy 4 catalogues quickly enough, and also so when I finally, finally, finally start making matter science, I'm going to be pulling off quite a few of them down here anyway. These, these, these four down here, and so it would be good to have a decent supply of them available. As you see, yeah, so there's a, as you can see down here, there is still a bit of a shortage. Oh, actually, there isn't a shortage. No, the, all the lights have gone green along here, so he does have enough of these um, wacky wavy, uh, waving arm inflatable tube man um, data is available. Um, but only just. I mean, it, it is building up a buffer here, but it's, uh, but uh, relatively slowly. So that is now. All of these are now, in fact, sufficient. Um, all the machines are running. Um, probably because he's been going in and putting some extra machines in to make sure everything does work properly, and also some beacons in to make, make things run a bit faster. He's also been increasing the production of the quantum processors along here. Uh, this seems to have ground to a complete and utter halt because he's run out of, um, oh yeah, the Holmium plates. So hence that train down on uh, Norvis is supposed to now be bringing the Holmium up and isn't doing a very good job of it. So when that comes up here, we'll start making a lot more of these quantum processors. They can be fed in, then fed into the intermediate strain over here, uh, which Tristan says he has got working, although uh, there's a slight lack of working because of the lack of quantum processors. That said, a lot of the places that need it aren't quite so bothered about the quantum processors at the moment. So we could just send it off again and see where it goes. Where, where is it going? Okay, it's going over to science area. That does require quantum processes then. Oh well, never mind. So yes, this is something that is just is, is just stopped because of a lack of supply. Although actually that's, there's some here, some available here. Oh, this one's short of holmium cables. Ah yes, because there's a splitter and an inserter thing miss, missing here that should be putting the holmium cables into here. So that's that, that, that can be fixed easily enough. But basically, yes, this will, once we get the supply of holmium up and running again, we will have a nice healthy supply of the uh, processes here. 
hopefully we've also stopped making, yes, the uh, the machine up here that was making um, Holmium cables beforehand has been removed, because now those should be coming up from Norvis as well, because it's cheaper to make them down there, as I've discussed before. We do have a backlog of 113 of them here, which I think is a lot lower than the backlog was before, so we've been working through those, that's good. I guess we, there's probably, um, I was going to say there's probably, yeah, there's a couple of, sort of specialised things along here, perhaps passing them back through again. I think we're just trying to get rid of all the stuff in here because a lot of it's a bit unnecessary. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to tell because there's, there's inserters pointing in all kinds of directions. And that brings us on to the interesting subject of Mark, who has been out here on Bigrid. So I said, I told you last week about how he'd fin essentially finished the production on stuff on Bigrid. So we've now got every everything is is, is working out, working nicely. He's got all the core miners. He's got all the uh, all the Vita things being produced, as you can see along here. There's loads of them queued up here. And the reason these are all stopped is because Mark has decided to go for an, a very interesting system. Uh, so the problem he's run into and has been and has been working to solve is that unlike, say, the beryllium planet, which ships out beryllium, or the holmium planet, which ships out holmium, these, these are easy because they ship out one thing, and so you just fill the spaceship up with as much of that thing as you can, you take it off to the other end, and then let the, uh, let the systems in Norbit and Norvis request what they want, and then they can then process the holmium down and do whatever they want with it. The Vita Melange is a bit different, because whilst the other ones, you put them into ingots, and that is their their, their best form for transporting, and you then cut them up into plates, and they get a bit and they get a bit more voluminous, you can't pack as many into a, into a spaceship, and then you turn them into cables, or scaffolds, or something like that, which again, requires other ingredients, and makes them even more voluminous, so you don't you don't want to transport those around. The Vita Melange, all the Vita Melange products, tend to get more and more dense, so you, if you put in maybe 10 Vita, uh, Vita Melange spice in order to make Vita Melange extract, and you put in another and you use ten of those to make a vitamin to make a, a bio scrubber, and then you use a load you use a load of the extract and the spice to make the the reagent and the epoxies and so on. So as you make the better the further and further on, they get more and more dense, and so it's better to transport these later things. Especially is because a lot of them require very very large numbers of those things, and so to transport enough vita spice uh, vita roast, I think this one is actually in order to, to make all of the other things remotely, is going to be an enormous amount of throughput and generally a bit of a mess. And so, the thing that, uh, well, the way Mark has decided to do it is he's going to transport all of them over there. And he's going to do it all through the same logistics system. So all of this will, when it's when it's actually working, and it isn't quite yet, there's a little bit of fiddling to do yet, will be passed into the same warehouse, into the same train, and then when it goes up to, to orbit, it'll all then be put into the same spaceship, and it's not being sorted at all at this end. Then it gets shipped over to Norbit, where it'll all be unloaded over here, and again, it'll all go into, into the same, into the same uh, warehouses over here, and then we'll load up whatever is required. And so this is... This is complicated, uh, and and also, but also interesting. And so, well, well, let's have a, let's have a bit of a look as to how it works. At the big red end, we are we have all we're, well, we're filling up all of these all, all these chests as as you do. I'm not quite sure what what are you doing. Are you enabled? Yeah, okay. So they're being more or less filled up. Um, and then I think they're, they're request, presumably, yes, they're requesting any anything else that's managed to get into the logistics system. So this is just to keep the logistics system tidy, prevent warehouses of shame, that sort of thing. The interesting part is on the other side of it. Where we are turning this on when uh, we have a request for um, we have a requ request for in this case bio scrubbers and then for each bio scrubber that comes through we're reading the contents and sending it out as a pulse and that pulse is being fed over to this this arithmetic combinator over here and this one is the core of all of the well all of everything that's going on essentially um, and so this is this is this is a counter it's working as a memory cell. And so each time a biological thing is put into the system over here, this will count up. So if we, if, if, I, if for example, I came over here, and, and I can break this without feeling guilty because I'm not going to save at the end of this. We're going to go back to an earlier version of it fairly quickly. So if I flick up, turn that to enabled and rotate this loader because it was loaded to keep it safe, then you see that the bio scrubbers all start to flow through and go into the warehouse, go into the train and so on. And if we watch this thing down here, you can see that number of um, bio scrubbers is counting up. Let's turn that off again. And so it's supposed to be watching for negative numbers. Now, I, yes, I went in there and broke it, but you'd have it. The idea is you would have a shopping list that is asking for ten thousand, five thousand, an, an appropriate number of each thing, with a, with an, sent by sending a ne putting a negative number out onto the network. And so when you set up your uh, shopping list with the large negative numbers, these all these all these systems over here will pass through until we've got until until, until that's satisfied. So you can ask for five thousand bio scrubbers, and then all be pumped through into the system. And that means they'll be passed into the trains, into the spaceship, and then taken off to Norbit. That sounds great, you say, but um, so every time you want some more bio scrubbers, you have to go over and increment the numbers, and then they'll be unloaded here, they'll go up through the system, and they'll be put into a train. Great. Um, or not so great. 
But the way the way that this works and the way that what actually makes it work is that over here, all of these inserters, when they're loading up the train, they're also doing they're also reading what they're handing over as a pulse, and that is then being fed through uh, somewhere over here, being multiplied by minus one, and then fed back out, fed back into the same system. So as they get unloaded from the um, the spaceship, as they, as they get put into a train up here. They will then be subtracted from those numbers, and so the numbers that we're setting on the on the shopping list, wherever the shopping list is, is the amount of each of those things that you want to always have somewhere inside the um, in, inside the, the logistics system. Now it means that if you if you have a high demand for something, you might have to wait a little while for it to arrive. But if you ask for that stuff, the the, the system will always load it in at the other end as so, as soon as it gets unloaded at this end. So if if we had some um, if we had some vitalic reagent in here, for example, if we put it into the train, then it would subtract from the uh, the total that is available at the moment, and then that would get passed on to the loading area at the other end. That would then see a negative number, and it could start loading it up again. So we should, in theory, we will always have those numbers that we set inside somewhere inside the logistics system now this doesn't mean at the moment it's, it's just transporting enormous quantities of the uh, of the over overspill the junk back and forth so the the iron ore and the copper and the coal and all that sort of stuff uh, that's all that's getting into the spaceship at the moment because it hasn't been activated properly um, eventually we'll have uh, all of the all the stuff being fed in here it'll all work nicely and hopefully that'll allow us to keep a a, a mess of various different things in the logistics system and, and if we get the numbers right and that's going to be the hard part will mean that we always have a supply of all of the things here and whenever we take some stuff out it'll be replenished automatically. We shall wait to see how, how well it works but I think the theory behind it is certainly very good, very strong. The question is whether we'll be able to get, whether we'll have enough capacity in the spaceships to keep to uh, to keep everything everything happy, everything running at the right speed. There is also a bit of overspill down here. So uh, Mark only only actually started setting this thing, this system up either this week or last week. I'm not sure exactly when. Um, and that meant there was an enormous amount of miscellaneous Vita stuff in the system already. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six warehouses worth of miscellaneous junk that he's pulled out and stuck in and stuck into temporary storage down here. And this does mean that some of it can be pulled out. So for example, if we came in here, if we if I remove this filter here, for example. Then it's going it, to. It, apparently, it's uh, core chunks that are going to be removed at the moment at uh, first because they're at the top of the. Uh, wow, he's got a lot of core chunks. Um, yeah, those are going to be removed from the warehouse like this, and we can get some of those out into here. And these, and this is all is all being read as well. So this is all now being passed out into the uh, into the signal transmitter here. Uh, let's stop that again. And if we go back to Big Red, then if we look on this combinator down here, we can see that now there's 622 uh, core fragments in, in the system as well. So it's been transmitted over here, but exactly as we'd expect. Uh, all we need to do now is put in some combinators with large negative numbers, and we can start feeding those things through as and when we want from, from down here, and also feeding them in from here, ideally as a bit of a priority to try and get, ri get rid of all of the stuff that's in all of these warehouses. At the moment, as you can see, he started doing that with the, uh, with the roast and the extract, because there's... Presumably, there's less of those, so he's pulled out quite a lot of that. Um, yeah, there we go. So now we can pour. Now we can pour some of the extract up, and if we, that should then come out of here. If I, there we go. So now we, yeah, we, we've now got the extract pouring through because that's one that we actually want and use up in large quantities. But with a bit of a bit of careful handling, we'll probably be able to work our way gradually through all of these all these things down here. Basically, by having different. Um, uh, filters on all of these. We can let then use the uh, use the belts along here to let let each each specific one out when we don't when, when we need a bit more of that rather than bringing it all the way from Big Red. So eventually, in theory, we'll get through all of this stuff down here. And I'm glad that Mark's got this system up into a position where it's basically going to start working now because it the the, the supply of Vita Melange or Vita products has been a little bit of a has been, has been leading to a little bit of a struggle for some for a lot of the uh, a lot of the systems. So, for example, over here, the science area, uh, making the biological force. Actually, no, I take it back. It does seem. Oh no, no, here we go. We're missing this one. Uh, this is the vitalic epoxy, I believe. Um, needs to be fed in here in order to make the tier four. Uh, four science, which is the one we're trying to use for our current research. So that's that's yeah, caused a bit of a problem here. But not a serious problem, Just it just means that it's it ground to a halt for the time being. And the module production that I'm going to be talking about in the next video also has a bit of a reliance on the uh, on, on the bio stuff as well. So, but we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the issues that one's having uh, it, in the next video because this one's gone on for quite long enough already and I think I, I need to draw the line somewhere. Well, here's an unfortunate moment. An energy glaive beam, uh, supposed to be killing all the biters, has just wandered right through the middle of one of my mines on Talos. 
Um, <laughs> I think I'd rather it didn't do that, actually, if, if I'm being honest. <laughs> it's taken out most of the defences. It's taken out a lot, all of the um, all the air scrubbers. It's not done a huge amount of damage to the mine, but yeah. Um, please don't. <laughs> And so I'm going to call this the end of the first video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll be back for the next one, which should be on uh, Monday. And we'll then back for the uh, the streams during the week as well. So on Tuesday, Tuesday, I shall be streaming XCOM 2 again. Things are going... Things started to go a little bit better last week after the sort of general calamity the week before. Um, we had we had a couple of very impressive kills from a couple of our soldiers. So, yeah, come along for that. It's, it's being a lot of fun. And you, there's a couple of soldiers left who you can design a, a character for if you, if, you, if you want to, who are still currently um, unnamed, should we say. Then, back on Thursday, where I shall be playing some more of the uh, Factorio Space Exploration Crash Rio 2 with the usual squad. And we shall be building everything here up and, and trying to solve all the problems that we talked about today and advance things on. Maybe we'll even get Matter Science next week. Who knows? We shall see. <laughs> and then more of these catch-up videos on Saturday and Monday because that's the uh, the new schedule. If you're not a supporter, you can also see last week's supporter video on Wednesday, I think, uh, which will be the which will be a, a, a tutorial about making a a pretty graph system like the one we've got down on Norvis in this in this run. So thanks again for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>